Uh, I know those that are sitting out here are going to have to hang on. Uh, but uh, 1 Timothy 6 this morning, we are thankful for you to be here. And I hope that this will be a blessing. I'm trying to pray and seek the Lord on the directions that we need to go during these days and uh, how we can be encouraged on these days that we're living. First Timothy chapter number 6. I want you to look in verse number 17 with me this morning. First Timothy 6, 17 says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. My title today on this Sunday is <laughs> the way overquoted phrase of that these uncertain times. These uncertain times. If you're like me, you're getting a little tired of hearing that phrase everywhere. It's uh, on every commercial, it seems like. It's, uh, it's the advice that everybody's giving. And as you hear the, the most common elements of a coronavirus commercial, it seems like, are these. There's sort of haunting piano music. They say, they show a picture usually of empty, barren streets. And then they have a voiceover that comes through and says, in these uncertain times, here's what you should do. Usually it's buy, still buy our product, okay? That's usually what they're saying. Please continue to use your phone and continue to do these and continue to shop with us. And for companies, they're, they're making these promises to the consumers. You know, I was looking and I, I put that phrase in, these uncertain times and I, I put it in a quote phrase and put it on a Google search and here's what the websites reveals first during these uncertain times it is normal not to be able to think as clearly as you once did even when it comes to routine tasks for now your needs are to keep yourselves and loved ones safe and healthy also it is normal to find communicating with others and yourself a bit challenging then the next thing down on the list said this, how and where to invest during these uncertain times. The next website was, what am I doing at home to feel calm and centered during these uncertain times? Then here's one, managing stress and anxiety during these uncertain times. Coping strategies during these uncertain times. You get the idea of everybody's got an idea of how to deal with these uncertain times. Well, what does the Bible say to us as God's people about uncertainty? Well, it says a whole lot. There's a whole lot of pages and a whole lot of things in the Word of God that tells us how we can deal with uncertain times. In our text today, our text begins with this word, charge. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded or trust in uncertain riches. That word charge is an order. It's a command. And Paul is writing to Timothy and he's saying, I charge you, I order you, I command you. First Timothy chapter 6 there in verse number 13, back just a few words. I give thee charge in the sight of God. Same idea. Who quickened all things and before Christ Jesus. Who through Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. I charge you. That's a directive here to uh, young Timothy. But my question for you today is, what does God want from us in these uncertain times? The book of Psalms in chapter 9 and verse 9, it says, The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And this morning, I believe that God has word for us in these uncertain times. That we could have confidence and assurance that God is still in control and He's working. And I believe that there's a lot that we can learn from this text. And I want to give you some thoughts here this morning from 1 Timothy chapter 6 on these uncertain times. How should we be reacting? How should we be acting? And so first of all, number one, if you're writing these things down, every change conquered. Every change conquered. So every change that comes along our way, with God as our helper, we ought to be able to conquer those, come out on the winning side and be victorious, no matter what change comes down the pike, no matter what's happening in our world. Too often, 
I don't know about you, but I don't deal with change very well. I do know we have a number of folks with a few years, and if you get to be, you've lived a life, you're used to things a certain way. Many of you are used to sitting in an exact pew and chair in our auditorium, and we don't deal with change very well. We don't deal with all the new things that we're having to do and the changes in our life and our world. Well, here's what we ought to be as God's people. Every change being conquered. Verse number 17 says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Simply put, it says don't be high-minded. What does that mean? Well, it means don't be proud. Don't be too proud to change. Don't be too proud to say, hey, if I've got to get the gospel in a little bit different way, I'm going to get the gospel out. Don't be too proud. Don't get high-minded. Humility will get you through whatever times you're facing. These days that we live in, we need humility more than we've ever needed it. To be able to get through these days, to realize I don't feel in control anymore. I don't feel like I've got everything the way I want it to be. Humility will get you through these days. Pride is sometimes what keeps us from adjusting to the things in life, the changes in life. Many times you see that pride that keeps people doing things long after they should. <laughs> you know, us men as we get older, our pride makes us keep lifting heavy things. But we know we should stop lifting those heavy things. You know what that is? That's pride. We don't want anybody to think we're getting older. We can't do things like we should. We can't do everything perfectly like we've always done. Many times people start doing things and somebody finally has to say, you have to stop doing this. And our pride says, I can still do everything just like I always have. You know what the Bible says? Don't be high-minded. Don't be proud. We've got to conquer these changes. We've got to get through those. And often pride will keep us from doing that. The Bible says, don't trust and on certain riches. <laughs> well, you say, I, I think our riches are pretty certain. Well, if you say that today, you have been massively, massively duped by this world. If you think that riches are certain, that what's in your bank account is certain, if your job is certain, boy, none of it's certain in this world we live in. Right. Nothing we have is certain. Don't trust in uncertain riches. You want to conquer the changes that are coming in our world? Don't trust in riches. Don't trust in the things of this world. Proverbs 23, 5 says, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. <laughs> they fly away toward heaven. <laughs> Boy, they, they, you can't trust them. But I'm going to say this. We still trust them. We still put way too much weight on riches, don't we? We plan on it. We think about it. We think about those things. And that's why we have a hard time when changes come. But I'm saying a believer, a Christian, somebody walking with God, every change that hits us, we ought to come out victorious. We are more than conquerors because He lives in us. We can conquer the things that are in our life. Proverbs 28, verse, I mean 11 verse 28, He that trusteth in his riches shall fall. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. You know, if God is really alive, God is really alive like we say, like we claim, my God's alive. Well, why don't we trust Him more? Why don't we lean on Him more? The psalmist wrote, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. I love it when I hear our church people say, I can't wait to get back in that auditorium. I can't wait to get back to church. My soul longs for those days. Yet, we've got to trust Him. We've got to lean on Him. And it's going to be worth it all when we see Jesus. Yeah. These days of trial, we're going to say, why didn't I trust you more, Lord, during those days? Well, I say to you today, every change that's coming at us, we ought to conquer it. Because we have a living God. We have a God that's in control. And you notice what this verse says? He giveth us riches. I'm sorry, giveth us richly all things to enjoy. I want you to note that this morning. He giveth us richly all things to enjoy. What are all things? You know, we think all good things. But it doesn't say all good things to enjoy. He giveth us richly 
all things. And so in light of every change being conquered, we need to look and realize that God has given us these things. God has given us these choices and these things before us. And we ought to conquer them. Like, like conquerors. We ought to go through these days because God has brought them. He gives it to us. We ought to enjoy it. Someday, these days are going to be only a, a memory. And I, I, I'm going to say I look forward to that. But I'm going to look back on these days fondly. I'm going to look back and remember you folks that faithfully drove in here and came to these services Sunday morning and Sunday night and you've been faithful online. I'm going to look back and remember that. That we conquered these changes. And we came through God working and blessing in these days. I'm going to look forward. I'm going to look, look forward to looking back to these days. You know, this is not what we wished for. But we ought to wish it away. We ought to enjoy it to the fullest. I've had many a times through the years of being a pastor here that somebody said, what a beautiful day. We ought to just have church outside. And I've always said, nah. Hey, whoever wished that, stop wishing it, okay? No, I'm just kidding. But what a blessing on this beautiful spring day to be able to have a place where we can meet together and have a spot where we can have a service during these days. Nay, we are in all things. We are more than conquerors through Him that loved us because we have a living God today. We have a God that can give us victory. So this morning, first of all, every change conquered. Look at verse number 18. Second of all, each choice counts. Each choice counts. Look at verse 18. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Do you know every choice you make counts? It counts for something. It's making a difference. It's the choices you make are affecting. Every choice counts. We ought to count them for good. We ought to want our choices to count for good in this world. Every choice counts. You notice our phrase starts out, our verse says that they do good. Work at doing good. Do you know it's work to do good? But we ought to work at it doesn't come natural for the most part. The natural man goes against those things. But we ought to want to do good. You notice it says be rich in good works. Interesting contrast with the last word. Don't trust in uncertain riches. But be rich in good works. You know that's something that doesn't fly away. Did you know that? When you do good works. You serve God. It doesn't fly away like with wings. It stays around. In fact... The Bible tells us it lasts for all eternity. When you serve Him, you're laying up treasures in heaven where moth and rust doesn't, doesn't corrupt and where thieves don't break through and steal. Be rich in good works. Have a surplus of good works. For he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. It's the same idea. Notice it says, be ready to distribute. That means, it's an interesting wording on this. It means to be present. It means to exist. And I, this is the only place this Greek word is used here. Distribute here. And it, it means to be present. And you say, well, preacher, I'm here. Now, I, I was so amazed by this. I could have preached the whole message just on this little phrase. Just on this from the Bible. Now, I want you to think with me because I want you to get a concept of what this word means. To be ready to distribute. So... I want you to look where this Greek word is used. Look at, you don't have to turn there, but listen here. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 6. You know this verse. It says, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. You know, that was Mary and Joseph in Luke chapter number 2 when they get to, uh, to Bethlehem. And the Bible says the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. But the same Greek word is the word there. Were there. And so, and so it was that while they were there, that's the same Greek word. It means to be present. It means to exist. And then in Luke chapter number 9, it says, He said unto them, Whom say ye that I am? Same wording. Who, say, who do you say that I am? The exact same idea of this Greek word being used here. And it's interesting that this same Greek word is translated to distribute. It just means to be present. Who are you this morning? Who is your life? Who am I? 
What is it about me? What do people see in me during COVID-19? Am I present? Am I there? Am I really available like I should? What do people see in us? Are we ready to distribute to others that have need? Man, what a powerful thought as we think about being present. Because all of us think about, well, I'm here. Preacher, I'm here. But we ought to be more than just a body there. We ought to be ready to be a part. Willing to communicate, the verse says. Willing to communicate. You know what that literally means? It means to be sociable. Uh, that is, I, I'm not stretching anything. When it says ready to communicate, it just simply is challenging us from the Word of God to be sociable. I'm, I'm talking about today of getting through these days. Our choices count. Being sociable is biblical. Now, I know we have this social distancing going on. And some of you introverts have been loving this. You just love the fact that you don't have to talk to anybody. You can just do your own thing. But you know, during these days, it's more and more important to communicate. As a pastor, it's more and more important for me to communicate with you. And be communicating in these days. It just literally means to be inclined to be liberal in your time, in your energy, in your thoughts, and of your life. And I'm saying to you today, each choice the believer makes counts during these days. During these trying times, during these uncertain times, every choice counts. Are you making yours count? Are you making your choices count for what matters? The Bible says in Psalm 37, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. You say, I don't have much to offer. You have a lot to offer if you're living for God. Offer yourself. Be liberal in your time. Be giving in your communication. May God help us to do that. Number three. Number three. I find this in verse number 19. Uh, verse number 19. Exalt Christ continually. Exalt Christ continually. How do we get through these uncertain times? And I say to you today, the best way I know how, exalt Christ continually. Lift Him up. Every chance you get. You know the Bible says to pray without ceasing. You know. I've always struggled with that. Because that seems unattainable doesn't it? I do well to pray a few times a day. Let alone unceasing. But you know I believe that means more. To be available to pray all the time. To be right with God so that you can pray at any moment. Of any time. That if I need to pray right now I can pray. That I can just stop everything and start praying. And I believe that's what it means. And I think the same here. Exalt Christ continually. Can we exalt Him with every breath and all the time? No. But we're ready to at all times. So if a tragedy strikes, we just praise God. I get a raise at work. I praise God. If I get demoted at work, I'm still going to praise God. Exalt Christ continually in whatever situation you're in. Look at verse 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. That they may lay hold on eternal life. This little phrase. Laying up in store for themselves. The meaning of this verse is just simply. That they were making such use of their life and property. That it would contribute to future things. Eternity even. They're laying up in store for themselves. They're, they're, they're planning for the future. They're looking ahead. They're not so caught up in the moment. I find if there's any problem that we're dealing with during this pandemic is, is this. We're caught up in the moment. We're caught up in what's happening now. We're, the only looking ahead that we're doing is, is that we're dreading, man, will this ever end? Will this ever stop? Instead of laying up in store. That's what we ought to be looking at in these days. How can I lay up in store for the future. How can I be serving God during these times? How can I be exalting Christ even during these days? The Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt His name together. May God help us to be a church that exalts Christ continually. You know, what's your foundation made out of? It says laying up a good foundation. What's your foundation standing in troubled times? If you're a 
in the Bible stories, you can't help but think about a troubled time. The Luke talked about, the Bible says, He that is like a man that built a house, dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. You know, that man built on a rock. And his foundation was mighty good. It was mighty stable. It was firm during the days. And so when the floods came and it beat against the walls, guess what? His house was standing when the storm was over. And I want our church to have a good foundation. I want your family to have a good foundation that when the floods come and the problems come, that it stands in these days. You know what the difference is? Hearing. You know what the difference is? Obeying God. You say, where do you get that? Well, Luke 6 continues on and says, But he that heareth and doeth not. So when you hear and don't do, you're like a man without a foundation. Built a house upon the earth and against the stream did the the, the stream did beat vehemently and immediately. You notice that? Immediately it fell. Immediately it crumbled. Immediately it fell apart. So when you find your life when a problem comes, you just immediately come unglued. You know what your problem is? Your foundation's not good. You know, I find people that just everything falls apart and they're just a basket case when anything happens. You know what their problem is? It's foundation issues. They just crumble immediately. You know, I, I hope that if a big storm comes against me, that I can at least stand up halfway through it. Then I can at least stand up. I might be need a lot of repair work, but I, I want to last through the storm. But immediately, the Bible says it fell apart. You know, found yourself upon a rock. Those watching live stream and many in your car can't see. But this morning, our camera that we're broadcasting on is founded upon a rock. We have a huge brick sitting on a leg of this camera. You know why? Because it wasn't standing this morning in this wind. This morning, we set it up. The first thing it did was blow over. And I set it up again. I, we turned it a different angle because we thought that'd fix it. Down it went again. So we found it upon a rock. And you know what? It hadn't moved. It stood up no matter. I think, I think we could have a lot of wind and it's not going to move that brick this morning. That's what our life should be this morning. We'd be founded upon the rock like Jesus. Are we exalting God during these troubled times? Exalt ye the Lord our God. Worship at His footstool, for He is holy. I close with this this morning. It says, the phrase in verse number 19, it says, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. And, and I don't want you to get a hold of this and think, you could read this and think maybe there was some work salvation involved there. But it's not by the way of merit, because it's a free gift of God. We have the riches of grace has given us title to being saved. But it's laying a hold on it. And the idea of this verse is talking about enjoying what we have. You know, the sad thing is, is too many Christians don't enjoy being saved. It's almost like an endurance. They're just holding on to the end. I ran into a lady this week in a store and I spoke to her and, and she said, I said, how you doing, ma'am? And she looked at me and said, I've been doing a lot better. This is an awful day. Man, I got out of that aisle as quick as I could. I mean, she wasn't enjoying anything about that day. And I don't know all the problems in her life and what she was going through. But I find a lot of Christians are living just about that same way. You ask them how they're doing. Oh, preacher, I'm barely making it. I'm barely holding it together. Oh, that we'd have joy. Oh, that we would shine forth and rejoice in these troubled times. Are you laying a hold of your salvation? That's what it's talking about. You're saved today. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, lay hold on that. It's eternal. It cannot be taken away from you. Oh, they may take away our rights. They may take away our country. They may take away this building from us. But they cannot take away our salvation. And this morning, I rejoice. That I'm saved. It's worth exalting Him continually. <laughs> Just never stopping. He is worth it. He's worthy to be praised. And in these troubled times, God is worth trusting in. 
He's worth trusting in. The Bible says the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in the times of trouble. So in these days, when you hear the sad music, and they say, oh, in these uncertain times, you can just smile and go, I'm a Christian. There's nothing uncertain about these times. Because I'm saved, and I know I'm saved, and I'm going to heaven. And if you don't know that today, what a day to get saved. What a day to trust Him. Trust Him in all times, ye people, the Bible says. Pour out your soul, your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Trust Him at all times. And I encourage you in these uncertain times to keep trusting the Lord. To keep leaning on Him. And of course, as these days look a little more certain as time goes on, we rejoice that no matter how uncertain it is, we have a God that's certain. We have a foundation that is sure. Stay on that foundation. Stay right with Him. To this morning, Brother Slayton's going to come and sing for us in times like these. And I want you to listen to the Word.